What's going on, Flex on Family? It's your boy God's favorite host, host the most back here on the Flex on Podcast YouTube channel. All the place giving you your sport, how you want it, when you need it. What you need right now is another Baltimore Ravens NFL regular season preview as we head into week four. Week four already, I can't believe it. And the calendar changes from September to October as the Baltimore Ravens welcome prohibited Super Bowl favorite. Buffalo Bills and their superstar quarterback Josh Allen into M and T Bank Stadium for their second home game of the season this coming Sunday at 1 p.m. Hit that like button, hit that bell, hit that subscribe button. You guys know the drill. Comment down below. Give me your predictions. Give me your standouts. Give me anything you think is going to happen on this wet and wild Sunday coming up. Thanks to Hurricane Ian. First and foremost, hope everybody's safe out there dealing with the hurricane in the path of the hurricane. Hope you're safe, you, your loved ones, family, and friends. Thank you, as always, for joining us here on Flex on Podcast. Again, hit the like button, hit the bell, hit the subscribe button. Let's get into it. Let's not waste any more time. First and foremost, the NFL is very goofy because this game should not be at 1 o'clock, okay? Um, that's very goofy because the NFL has some goofy games at 4 o'clock, and I want to read them to you because I don't like what they're doing. And as you know, there are only, what, three 4 o'clock games this week? So we have Cardinals, Panthers, Snooze Fest. Patriots, Packers, snooze fest. Mac Jones won't play. And Broncos, Raiders, which has to be at 4 o'clock. Raiders could go to on 4. And Broncos haven't looked or given anything to really make you feel like they're going to do anything special. Offensively, they suck. But anyway, let's get to it. This game should have been at least at 425. And NFL kind of messed this one up. But either way, it is what it is. We got Ian Eagle, Charles Davis on the call, Evan Washburn. They will be here. The Ravens look to avoid going 0-2 at home, something we don't see often either. Now, there was a game like this last year where the Ravens came in, prohibited underdogs, thought they were going to get beat like a drum, thought they were going to lose against the Chargers, and the Ravens pulled the Chargers' pants down and spanked them like they were their parents and beat them like they stole something. So the National Football League is a week-to-week league, and anything can happen. Now, with that being said, hopefully – this week is much of the same. Big week last week for the Ravens, of course, Lamar Jackson, AFC Officer Player of the Month. Now, I want to shout out Buffalo Bills fans. I know you're going to come across this video. I know you're going to come across this channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. Let's go, Buffalo. Hey, I love the theme song. Great fan base. When Lamar got hurt in that divisional playoff game, did a GoFundMe for Lamar. They did a GoFundMe for Tua. And this man wasn't even caught off the field yet. They are a great group of fans. I want to clap it up for you guys. Shout out to you, you, and you. We know you're taking over Baltimore MT Bank Stadium where there will be a lot of Buffalo Bills fans. It'll probably be 50 50, may even be 55 45, 60 40 Buffalo Bills fans. They're driving down. Some live here and they're traveling throughout the country from what I'm hearing. So have fun, be safe. Don't put anybody through a table. But I do. If you guys want to put me through a table and you guys want to join the channel, subscribe, let me know. I will go through a table for you, Bills fans, for Ravens fans, for everybody on the Flex On Podcast, part of this family, for the brand to get those subscribers. Hey, might help us out. Let me know. Tailgate, I'll get put to a table. I'm a big wrestling fan, as you know, here on the channel. So I wouldn't mind that as well. But we can set that up. Wanted to shout you guys out. Let's go. Now with the Ravens, um, Ronnie Stanley is really getting on my nerves because he practiced every day this week, and today he did not practice. So I don't know what that means for Ronnie Stanley. Is it a day of rest? Is it a day of recalibration? Is it a day of being cautious with him? Um, he talked. The other day to the media, so there was speculation that, okay, players only talk if they're going to play like J.K. Dobbins did last week. Lamar saying he's ready. Jahalbaugh says he looks like he's ready. What the hell does that mean? Because, Stanley, if you don't play, Daniel Fa'alele is going to have a long day against the likes of Von Miller, Greg Russo, Ed Oliver, Boogie Basham, and the others of this number one ranked Bills defense. Now, the weather, as I said, will play a factor. We'll be wet, wild. We'll be some wind, about 15 to 20 miles per hour. That could definitely affect throwing the football. Help maybe the Ravens with the pass rush because the guys maybe can't get off the ball as quick if it is a little slippery and a little wet out there. And we shall see what that means for the Ravens because I do want to see how they kind of do this. Could we see a situation where Stanley comes back and plays limited, plays maybe a series here or there, and Fahalele comes in after him? They kind of switch on and off based on how he's feeling, based on how he's playing, based on how the weather's affecting him. At this point, we need Stanley in the worst way. And if he has to play one series here, take a series or two off, then come back. I don't know. I've never seen nothing like that with offensive linemen, but if it has to work, 
we have to do what we have to do. I think either way, whoever started left tackle, the Baltimore Ravens, Greg Roman, who called a hell of a game last week, got to give him a, a game ball. Give this man some help. Give him a Nick Boyle. Give him a, a somebody back there to block. Patrick Ricard. I don't really want Dobbins or Hill blocking because they're not really good blockers personally, but give him a Boyle. Give him a Ricard. Give them some extra help on the offensive line. McCarry, he's probably not going to play. Justin Houston looks like he's going to be out with the groin injury. Michael Pierce, he's gone for the year. So the injury bug fighting the Ravens yet again. But let's get to those keys. I want to hear what you guys think and let me know in the comments. I'm going to get to the keys. I know you want to know the keys to the game. Let's start with the offense as we always do. First and foremost, handle the weather. It'll be wet. It'll be wild. It'll be windy. Let us know. What do you think is going to happen? Could that help the Ravens offensive line? Could that help the Ravens as the pass rushers of Devon Miller and Greg Russo and Boogie Basham and Ed Oliver and others? A.J. Epineza, could that hesitate some of them getting off the ball a little slowly, which could help Lamar get the ball out quickly? But you have to handle the weather. Get your footing. Take your time. And don't move too fast. Secondly, I have control of the clock. The best way to stop the number one offense, well, they're number two, but they're right there. Keep them on the field. Keep them next to the coaches. Keep them with the clipboard or the tablet or the play sheet, the headset on, getting plays from upstairs, preparing to come into the game. Best way to keep them off the field is to not let them on the field. Control the clock. Run the football. Utilize your offensive weapons. Do what you did last week. Be balanced. And, hey, keep Josh Allen in that offense on the field. They can't beat you if they're not on the field. They can't score any points if they're not on the field. Thirdly, protect Lamar. I just talked about it. Stanley, he may or may not play. I don't – I'll believe it when I see it. I, I will believe it when I see it at this point. I don't want to call him what I call him off air because I don't want to disrespect this man. But Stanley, I'm going to just say it rhymes with Croft, okay? It rhymes with Croft. That's what I call Stanley. Please. We know you haven't played in over two years. You weren't ready last year when you came back against the Raiders. Fire Lele did a hell of a job in the second half after getting becoming a turnstile looking like blowing away with son out there in the first half last week. Give him some help. Boyle, Ricard, have them up there. We need extra help either way if it's Stanley or Fire Lele, who I think could eventually maybe in a year or two be our new Orlando Brown, hopefully, at right tackle. Number four, use the tight ends in the passing game. Looking at this Bills defense, I think there are some weakness in the middle of the field with their linebackers covering our tight ends. We know Mark Andrews is a matchup nightmare with anybody at the tight end position. He's top two, not two, in my opinion, at the tight end position. Look how he's playing right now. The guy can do it all. One-handed catches, shovel passes, catches passes that aren't thrown correctly. He can do it all. Mark Andrews will get the ball, and they'll probably pay a lot of attention to him. So that brings me to Isaiah Likely. Isaiah Likely could play a big impact in this game, could have a big impact in this game, could be very important to see what he can do on short yardage and on play action situations and even in the red zone. So Isaiah Likely, pack your hands, wear your gloves in the rain. We're going to need you in the passing game. And now fifth one for offense is executing the red zone. You're going to need every point you can against this Buffalo Bills high-powered air raid offense. Going to have to execute in the red zone. We need touchdowns instead of field goals. No turnovers. No failed fourth down conversions. No goofy plays. If you're one, two yards out, get that one or two yards. Be aggressive, but don't be overly aggressive or you hurt yourself. Yes, you need points. You can settle for some field goals, but you need touchdowns when you're in the red zone against this offense. Let's go to the defense. Got to tackle well. I say this every week. We don't know if Isaiah McKenzie is going to play ankle injury, but if he does play, he still has that speed. Stephon Diggs, we know he's going to come back. Ravens passed on him multiple times, as did other teams. His mom called out. Ozzie Newsom said you should be fired for passing on my son. Fifth round pick. Goes to Minnesota. Now he's with Buffalo, and he's been one of the best receivers in the league, top five, and probably higher than that, if you want to be honest with him, and his ability to get yak yards. We'll see who they have on him. It'll probably be a combination of guys. We'll see a lot of Marcus Williams playing deep. Don't want him to get beat deep. We'll see some Humphrey on him, probably some Peters. I don't want Armour Davis. I don't want Pepe Williams on him. Keep them off of him, but we got to tackle well. And Knox in the passing game. Singletary, McKenzie, as I mentioned, Moss. They use their running backs very well in the passing game, does Buffalo. And Allen will check it down to them. They have to tackle well. Don't allow big yak, please. Next, win the turnover battle. Ravens and Bills are two of the better teams in creating turnovers, getting takeaways. They did a hell of a job last week against New England. If they didn't do that last week, they would have lost that game because New England was moving up and down the field. When you're not a great defense, when you give up a lot of yards, when you give up a lot of big plays you have to be able to take the ball away and give your offense opportunity they did that well last week with the fumbles the recoveries and things like that you got to pressure josh allen i would love to see them get some pressure on josh allen jpp is going to make his debut we'll see what he does obviously no justin houston as i mentioned adafi Oway, we need you baby
Y'all can keep up with a guy like you can maybe be a spy on Josh Allen. You could be a guy to keep him in the pocket, which goes to my next key. Keep Josh Allen in the pocket. Don't over pursue. Don't over run your assignment. Don't let him get upfield. Keep Josh Allen in the pocket. JPP will see if he plays 15, 20 snaps. Can't overuse him. He's just coming back and he is a veteran. So I want to see what they do with Owe. Can they get some type of pass rush? Matter BK. We know Pierce is out. We shall see. And my last key is make them one dimensional. They run the ball, but they only run the ball when they have to. They're they're not looking to run the ball. They're looking to be a pass rush offense. We know Ken Dorsey. We saw him breaking stuff last week and having a tip attention like a three year old. But they are ready to throw the football in any condition. They throw the ball well. They run a lot of plays as we've seen last week. They just beat themselves. They blew out the Rams. They are looking to avoid losing two games in a row as well. They are, in my opinion, the best team in the AFC, possibly up there with the Chiefs and others. But they have to – you have to make them one-dimensional because I think that could play into the Ravens' hand of having seven DBs on the field because that way you don't have to have Patrick Queen and Josh Bynes and Malik Harrison who aren't good in coverage against some of these speedy, shifty weapons that they have. You can have Kyle Hamilton on the field. Use him to move around, maybe be a spy along with Oway on Allen. Blitz, get pressure on Allen with a variety of unique looks using Kyle Hamilton, as I mentioned, maybe. He played less plays last week. That could be good for him. Use him in 15 to 20, 25 plays. Allow him to use his athleticism. He made a hell of a play on the recovery to force the fumble. Use Jalen Armour Davis. Use Pepe Williams. Use Marcus Williams. Use Humphrey inside and outside. Use Marcus Peters. Use these guys and the 7 DB look if that's where you're going because you know they're not going to be able to run the football. Use it. Matt BK went up front. I think there's an opportunity for their right tackle. Um, he got benched last week, and they have a veteran who is behind him. I think there could be a chance for some opportunities with Owe. I might put Owe on that side, let him work against the right tackle, or even JPP, let him use his veteran leadership, move these guys around to create some opportunities because if there's one weakness on the offensive line, it is right tackle. And uh, let me get that guy's name because I, I was I know he got benched last week. Uh, I should have had this in front of me, but – um, uh, because they, they got a good offensive line, they really have no holes. You know, Deion Dawkins, Roger Saffold is a veteran, Mitch Morris is a very good center, Ryan Bates is pretty solid. Yeah, Spencer Brown got benched last week, and David Quesberry, Queesberry, he is the backup, a veteran guy. So, my opinion, move all way around, move JPP around, put them over the right tackle, put Matt at BK, put Calais Campbell over this right tackle situation, and get some pressure on Josh Allen. Uh, we got Gabe Davis. He's questionable. McKenzie's going to play, it looks like. Knox is questionable. He's on my fantasy team, so I know how that goes. But And 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 like I said, there are some opportunities, but their defense, man, Greg Russo, Ed Oliver, Daquan Jones, Von Miller, I mean, come on now. You, you got some, some good players. And even though no Micah Hyde, Jordan Poirier may return, it looks like, so that could be an interesting situation for them as well. And I got to do special teams. Can't forget my special teams. Make your field goals and extra points. You know the weather will be wet, wild, and windy. Justin Tucker, we know you're the greatest kick of all time. We make, we know you're going to make your field goals at home, but you did miss an extra point last week. It didn't come back to bite them, thankfully. But in a game like this, as I mentioned with the offense, you need every point, every opportunity in the red zone, and we need every extra point. We need every field goal, every three points, every one point. We need it all. Add it up. Run it up. Also need the points this week. And Ben Stout, the last couple of weeks, brother, I was high on you. You look good in the preseason. You look good week one. Granted, against the Jets, but got to make some better punts. It'll be wet, wild, and windy tomorrow. I said that so many times on this episode of this video, but Jordan Stout, we need you, brother. Got to pin them deep if we do have to punt. Make them go to distance of the field. Make them go on 10, 12, 15 plays against our defense. And make them have to go on long drives. Get the crowd into it, and we shall see. But let's recap the keys, and I will give my prediction, which I'm still working on because I don't want to pick against the Ravens, but I might be. But we shall see in a second. Offense, handle the weather. Second, control the clock. Number three, protect Lamar. Number four, use the tight ends in the passing game. Number five, execute in the red zone. Number six, I mean, excuse me, number one for the defense, tackle well. Number two, win turnover battle. Number three, pressure Josh Allen. Number four, keep Josh Allen in the pocket. And number five, make them one-dimensional. And, of course, special teams. Make your field goals, extra points, and better punts from Jordan Stout. Now, I do think the Ravens are going to have to, and I could have put this in the keys, they're going to have to score at least between 34 to 35 points to win this game. I think this will be possibly a high-scoring shootout game with both teams in the 30s. I'm going to go – I've been picking the Ravens every week. I don't know if the Ravens are going to 0-2 at home, and I'm hoping me picking against them will be the opposite kind of reverse psychology. 
So I'm going to go. I can see Allen really having a big day throwing for 300. 30, 350 yards. I do think Lamar can get us 300 yards by himself, maybe 75 to 100 rushing, throwing for 225. So he could have over 300 yards by himself, maybe two or three touchdowns. Like I said, the tight ends could be huge. Dobbins another week under his belt. Justice Hill get him some more carries, hopefully. I want to see Bateman and the receivers. Duvernay, do they continue their hotness that they've been doing this season? Demarcus Robinson, maybe see more of him as well, but I could see Allen having maybe three or four touchdowns through the air. I could see maybe their defense getting one as well with a turnover possibly. I'm going to go Buffalo 34, Baltimore Ravens 31. I think Buffalo will outlast them, will get a last second field goal in some shape or form to win by three. So I could see a situation where Buffalo gets out to a 17-7, 14-6, 14 10 lead, maybe in the first quarter, and then midway through the second quarter, going in the halftime. I can see the Ravens starting to play from behind, but they may just run out of time because of the slow start. Because I think Buffalo will come out hot, heavy, and frustrated after last week's loss and a hot Miami where Ken Dorsey was breaking things like a three year old throwing a tantrum. I can see the Ravens losing on the last second field goal because of a slow start. So I'm going to say Buffalo 34, Ravens 31. I think Lamar has over 300 yards, as I mentioned, probably two or three touchdowns, but. I hate picking against the Ravens, but I'm going to be a realist with you guys. I love the team. I love them. We love them here on the Flex Zone Podcast. We know you do, too. Again, shout out to the Buffalo fans in the area doing all the great things for the charities, being such a great, passionate, respectful, fun, enjoyable fan base to welcome into m Bank Stadium. We know they'll be out there as well, rain or shine. But the weather will be interesting. Be safe out there, everybody, if you're going to the game. We know D, we know Raj from the Flex Zone Podcast will be there as well. So we'll see what they post for the channel throughout the game but as always guys hit the bell hit the subscribe button hit the like button let me know your thoughts give me your predictions in the comments down below yes i picked against the ravens but i'm hoping it's some reverse psychology i got the bills 34 ravens 31 high scoring game in the 30s should keep you on the edge of the seat as always pack your high blood pressure medicine any way you look at it it ain't tight it ain't right with the ravens we know how it they do it here on the Flex Home Podcast. Only place to give you your sports how you want it when you need it. Throw up your ones and acknowledge the head of the sports podcast table. Both with the moist, God's favorite. I'm out of here, y'all. Let me know your comments, predictions, and everything you look forward to seeing this Sunday. I got the Bills winning 34-31, but the Ravens win. I would not be surprised as they get ready for next week, Sunday night, against Cincinnati coming off 10 days of rest, which we'll talk about as well. I'm out of here, y'all. Peace. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit the bell. Have a great weekend, y'all. And we'll be here live for the Baltimore Ravens post game show after that week four matchup against the Buffalo Bills. Win or loss, as always, with Big Raj and Dio Damas. Appreciate you guys. Appreciate all the support. Welcome all new subscribers. Thank you again. Buffalo fans, shout out to you. Comment down below, Buffalo fans. Let me know your thoughts. Subscribe to the channel. I'll do Buffalo Bills videos. I'll talk about Josh Allen versus Lamar Jackson. Buffalo is a prohibited Super Bowl favorite. They probably will at least be in the AFC Championship game. We shall see as this week progresses if they stay healthy. But I'm out of here, y'all. Peace.